We're glad to know you're still there and watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now there's an issue that has become a very turny issue for a long time, even though it's being said that it's festering and it has become a really big problem nowadays. We're looking at difficulties in mental health associated with corporate begging. There's mental health on the one hand, there's corporate begging on the other hand, there's, there's begging on the other hand, and then there's corporate begging, mm -hmm. you know, as an addendum to that. We do have, as our guest this morning, uh, Philip Ishiguzo uh, Osuigwe, mental health nurse, Department of Behavioral Medicine in Lassute. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Osuigwe. Good morning. Thank you so much. It's nice to be here. Good morning, audience and listeners too. Okay. Let us try. Yes, let us try to to get the link between mental health and begging as a whole before we go into what we're discussing. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to begin this discourse by uh, explaining the two major aspects of it, which is begging and uh, mental the mental health. Now, begging, as we know, simply means the act of asking people for money. It could be, ask, it could be asking for food, clothing, and uh, anything of uh, necessity at a particular point in time. Now, that means it is, it is an act of soliciting, solicitation for money or food or any other thing by an apparent penniless person. It therefore means that it is seen as a norm in the society. As long as there is genuine uh, state, of, state of lack or poverty, as the case may be, the society can accommodate this to some extent, especially when it is what I call short term. Short term in the sense that you might be in an examination hall, you 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 other GC jam promotion exam or whatever, and you have your writing materials, and all of a sudden, you the pen that you are using may stop working. It means not writing again. The ink is not flowing, and you are trapped. The only option you have now is to ask your fellow candidates in the in the same hall. Please, could that? Now, having said that. Um, it could also be in other, other forms. Now, the begging could be for an individual, and it could also be at the corporate level. The corporate in this instance, as well as, as, as uh, for the purpose of this discussion, is like, um, you know, NGOs, you can have non-governmental organizations that solic solicit for sponsorship, support or donation from corporate entities or individuals in order to achieve their objectives it is still a form of begging with official or corporate image presentation we cannot deny that in the same vein the society does not condone or tolerate any form of begging devoid of transparency honesty genuineness it is considered an abomination once a case of dishonesty deceitfulness or lying is established in that case, the same society that accommodates it with all sincerity of evidence and apparent based situation that somebody is really in lack or is, is in need, we now go, we no longer tolerate it when it has been established. Oh, this person is just pretending, this person is lying, this person is deceiving the society. The society frowns at that. Now, there is yet another form of corporate begging, which is where we are going to be uh, focusing more on in this uh, discussion. This is a new breed of begging, like as published by Guardian, where the Vanguard online, like uh, 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 the uh, which prompted this uh, discussion, I believe. These corporate beggars take begging as a means of livelihood or long term begging. These beggars sometimes are well dressed, good looking, able bodied, middle aged young or uh, middle aged or young adults. They usually hang out around shopping malls, they could be in the, uh, in the markets, they even move around offices begging for arms, well-dressed with their suits. Most of them are even graduates. They now take it as a form of livelihood, as a means of livelihood. It becomes what they are now looking forward to, 
particularly when they realize that, oh, they are even making more money more than their counterparts who are in a regular or paid job, or civil servants or low-income earners. Like that publication tells us that some of them are making as much as 150,000, 300,000 naira monthly. This is a huge incentive. Now, let's now look at the mental, the mental health aspect of our discussion this morning. Mental health, according to WHO, is a state of well-being in which the individual realizes his or her own abilities, can cope with normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to contribute to his or her community according to Herman et al. 2005. Now, this simple definition of mental health by WHO World Health Organization has underscored the dangers inherent in corporate begging. Corporate begging now negates the meaning of mental health. For example, the individual that deliberately indulges in corporate begging is living in denial of his or her abilities to work earn a living or be productive and of course contribute meaningfully and genuinely to the community or society legitimately for instance some of them like i said before are graduates of various disciplines the implication of corporate begging in a long uh, a long run is that it erodes the psyche of the individual thereby making him or her lose self-confidence and the personal drive to genuine career development and progression. The moment they discover that they can even earn more than their counterparts in regular paid jobs, they can become professional beggars. They want to stick to it, they want to remain there. Secondly, begging is a social problem considering overall negative effects in the society. Example, begging is akin to antisocial behavior. According to international scholars, journalists, uh, journals published online in 2014, beggars constitute a threat to Nigerian society, especially in the cities like Lagos, Port Harcourt, Abuja, and so on and so forth, like the picture we saw in that Vanguard publication. They portray a bad image to outsiders or strangers. Some criminals, again, hide under the guise of beggars to perpetrate their evil deeds. The nefarious activities of fake beggars such as criminals, area boys, and talks constitute one of the sources of civil unrest to the city dwellers. Mm. Now, let's take it to the next level. When a professional beggar includes now, a professional beggar, that is someone who has decided that begging is my source of livelihood, when they lose this, their livelihood through government legislation, or periodic rates when they have become a nuisance in the society. When they lose their, this their source of livelihood without an alternative source of income, it could lead to frustration. And when they are frustrated, some of them might tend to substance use and abuse, which is another kettle of fish, resulting in a huge societal disturbance. Again, some might end up being depressed. And when they are depressed, of course, you know that that's another serious mental issue. Because once depression and frustration has set in, either they, 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 they uh, tend to substance use in order for them to cope, as they will tell you, most of them that have been uh, encountered before when I was in a, working in a, an NGO that is into drug habitation. Some of them will say they did that because they feel that it will help them to cope. Whereas at the end of the day, they create more problems. Dependence, withdrawal syndromes will also set in. But most importantly is depression, who could not progress to uh, 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 even suicidal addiction and suicide. So this, this is a whole uh, chain of societal evil. But people look at it, tend to look at it shallowly, particularly the practitioners now, the, the people who, who uh, um, who see corporate begging as a means of livelihood. They only look at the fact that, oh, I can, I'm making money, not knowing that they are reducing their self-esteem. They are reducing their ability to thrive 
under normal circumstances, particularly those that have no form of disability, this stance does not foreclose the fact that some religious organizations, some religious beliefs, see beggars as part of a means of helping them uh, practice their beliefs by giving alms, by giving lending helping hands to beggars, either money, monetarily especially, and otherwise. Well, I don't have a problem with that. But what we are now interested more is this corporate begging that has taken another dimension. Most young adults, graduates, they dress gorgeously. Some I have encountered some of them personally, even under in, the, in Lagos here where I, where I stay, uh, I catch under bridge and some other a, a places, so Joe Legba, Mushi, and some other places. You see them wear dressed, they will approach you and, and then create one story just to appeal to your conscience to help. And because they, if they, and one thing that works for them is that they have a kind of, um, I don't know whether they have a kind of resistance or immunity against rejection. They know that if they approach 50 people, out of that 50, well, maybe 30 may reject them. The other 20 might, they might, might be moved to show compassion on them. And so it keeps striving. So in the, at the end of the day, you, we end up having a society that is full of miscreants. That is that is contributing negatively because some criminals now hide under the the, the shadow of uh, begging uh, and then mm. to carry out their nefarious uh, activities. Okay, so I know that. I want to pause here at this point. I don't know if I have communicated well <laughs> enough. Yes, yes, very extensively. I know that I have. Um I've seen so many, I mean, even in traffic and all, and I think when I was even reading this story, you're hearing of people who that is their day job. Mm -hmm. they, they earn a lot of money, and so they, they just feel, why, why do I need to have a corporate job when I can be a corporate beggar? Um, however, my question is, how do we even mitigate this? How do we sensitize people to let them know that, I mean, there is more in you. You have the abilities, you have the um, capability. To, to be able to be more than just begging on the street and, you know, just looking for money that you can just get yes. from someone. So how do we mitigate this that is happening and, you know, just championing the fact that they can do more with their lives? Yeah, this is uh, an interesting aspect of the discourse because, uh, uh, like I said, uh, I, I, sometimes, sometimes, I, as an individual, when I am stranded, I, I didn't uh, appreciate what it takes to even beg. For example, uh, all of a sudden you, you realize that you don't have a cash on you and you need to do a transaction and you need cash. You know, I, I, I find, I mean, personally, I concluded that for you to take that decision to beg somebody, to, to, to beg at that point in time, it, it's, it's a burden to me. I don't know about other people, but for me, it's a very difficult thing. I, I find it difficult to beg. <laughs> You know, but you see, now we are now looking at people who no longer cares. Their mentality is now dependent on the fact that begging is a means of making their life be good. Mm -hmm. Now, the uh, attraction there lies on the fact that some of them can make huge sums of money at the end of the day. This uh, 20,000 daily, 10,000 daily. Uh, some of them make more than that daily. And then you put it all together, at the end of the month, they're making over 300,000. And then you look at uh, uh, the paying jobs now. Uh, even if, even as a civil, as a civil servant, mm -hmm. a graduate starting on level eight, you and I know what is mm -hmm. expected, what is the package. Now, you now see that it is nowhere near that amount this uh, so-called professional beggar is making. So that's the enticement. That's the enticement. What is important now is for the society, NGOs, even government agencies, National Orientation Agency, uh, Ministry of Information, uh, religious organizations, churches, mosques, and all others, seeing it as something that uh, has negative effect because a lot of youths now uh, are lazing about. You know, we, we need to start working on their mental, on their mind, the mindset. If their mind is not disabused, that, oh, you are able, you are a graduate, uh, and therefore, you can do something legitimately. Government can offer 
uh, platforms whereby these people, these individuals can be trained. Some NGOs are trying to organize uh, uh, what, what we call empowerment programs. I'm involved in a social welfare ministry of my church, for example. We organize empowerment programs from time to time to our teaming youths. Now, again, I cannot uh, deny the fact that the society itself is also part of this problem. How do I mean? Look at uh, this. Look at the Nigerian state today. Look at our society today. No jobs. Even those that have the best brains are denied of opportunities to even offer them employment. You have to bring a letter from a senator, from a one politician, although you, you must be a candidate of a, a well-connected individual in the society mm -hmm. before you can be considered for offer of job, especially in the ministries and parastatal agencies, even in the organized private sector. There is some uh, observation that nepotism plays a role. Two people have applied for a job. The one that has the best, uh, meet the best minimum qualification is denied because he doesn't know anybody or he belongs to a particular tribe. So the key thing is actually in having the society need to re be, re be re-engineered. Government need to wake up to their responsibilities. NGOs need to come up of religious bodies, organizations, churches, fellowships, they can all come up and have a one, uh, speak with one voice. I am not condemning begging totally because there are people, of course, because of their disability, they may be what I call long-term beggars. But these ones that have the ability, they went to school, the society should find a way of accommodating them, showing them an alternative means of making and earning their livelihood. If we get it from there, from their mental states, then we, it's not going to be a day's job. It's going to be something that is continuous, that will be done intentionally, deliberately, to get them understand to win them off that dependency. Because it's, it's when it has become a corporate begging, uh, when someone has chosen corporate begging as a career now, as a profession, you know, it, it's looking at what is getting. And come to think of it, how many uh, corporate bodies can employ a young graduate and then place him on a salary of over 400,000? Whereas in the begging industry, the profession now, he is seen close to that or more, even a little bit, maybe a little bit less than that. So that is where the problem now lies. Mm. So I believe that if the government should do more, NGOs can do more, religious bodies can do more, individuals, respected individuals, role models, all these are our celebrities. If some of them can actually become ambassadors of legitimate means of uh, livelihood, I am quite sure to go a long way. It may not eradicate it completely, but it will reduce, it will go a long way in reducing the incidents. Yeah. Okay. This uh, is my own understanding yeah. of the there, whole there thing were so, from my so own many, experience. There were so many questions I wanted to ask you, but you seem to have answered all that. You've proffered uh, the solutions that we need uh, to curb this. Uh, now, the beggars in your description are sounding really smart and confident, you, you know. But <laughs> they, the problem is that they're using the smartness and the confidence in a negative way, just yes. like uh, people who are yes. doing Yahoo, yes, instead of using the same internet for legitimate businesses, which sometimes would even pay them more. Mm -hmm. But they just want to stay the negative way. But we'd like to thank you, uh, Mr. Osugwe, for coming on the program this morning. It's been very enlightening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Have the, the yeah. That was Mr. Philip Ishiguzo Usigwe, uh, mental health nurse, Department of Behavioral Medicine in Lasso, talking to us about begging and uh, creating a connection between begging and mental health. So if you're smart enough and you're confident enough and you're not using it to contribute to the society, you just might have a mental problem because you're not exploring mm -hmm. all your capabilities. Uh, to use to better our society. That's why we got the cotton this morning. We thank you for being there. My name is Nyan.